He's got enough time to get to Harvick, but he's coming. He's going to get close. I tell you, if Harvick encounters any traffic that slows him down at all, Brian Blaney will be there. Blaney's career best, seventh at Richmond, and he matched it at Bristol. The 18-year-old has been sensational tonight in his first run in any kind of car here in Texas. Right side of your screen, Sadler doing all he can to hold on to 10th. Ellie Sadler is doing all the, he's driving just as hard for this spot as Ryan Blaney is trying to catch Kevin Harvick for his first victory ever. The gap from first to second is 1.4. Joey Logano now going around the 88 of Cole Witt. Here comes Cole Witt right back on the low side. Are we gonna go three wide here? Not quite. And again, Elliott able to hold off. Four laps remaining here in Texas. Elliott gets way high. He may lose one, not one, but two spots. He's definitely lost one. We now have a tie. And it's going to be all Sandler can do to hold Cole Witt back there. I'm not sure he's going to be able to. What a difference two weeks can make. The comeback at Kansas for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And now the late race issues for the two car. Three laps to go. And now with Elliot Sandler in 12th position, Stenhouse is the new points leader. Yeah, Stenhouse has got the 18 car behind him on fresh tires, though. He's got to hold him off for a couple of laps. Two laps remaining. Kevin Harvick trying to reel in his second win of the year. Now, Ron Blaney's still coming at him, but he's actually slowed down just a little bit from what he was. He was gaining two to three tenths a lap. Last lap, it was only a hundredth of a second. Blaney restarted 13th. A remarkable run for the 18-year-old. Last lap, Caddy, you gonna get you. White flag, you heard the spotter, he ain't gonna catch you. And I think he's right unless Kevin gets wicked loose. Down the back stretch for the final time, Kevin Harvick looking for his 39th career win in his 290th nationwide race. The former nationwide series champion Made it look pretty easy. He's led 127 laps tonight. Ryan Blaney with a career best second. How about the championship? Here comes Stenhouse. It's a drag race for that final position for the two car. As Cole Witt comes home in 10th. And there you see the top oh, that's the way to aim. I see you anyway. Good job, guys. Cope and the 33 team, but for Elliot Sandler, he's going to climb out of the car and realize he is now in second place in the championship by one. Or no, wait a minute, it is exactly tied at 1170. He's actually able to pass Cole Witt right at the end. A little disagreement here between Austin Dillon and uh, Denny Hamlin, it looks like. Once again, I think we're looking at, how did we get here, Ricky? 
Yeah, he was just telling me that uh, his monster car beat Arnold's car, but uh, three times we've ran this, we beat him twice in it, so I think I think we're ahead in that. But um, oh, that was a tough night, man. We were first run wasn't too bad. We got a little tight. Uh, second run really loose and never really caught back up with it. That re last restart, we started we started 11th. Uh, well, the restart before the last one, and I was just holding it wide open, going where they were, trying to trying to get to the front. Got our track position, drove a little bit better up front, but. Um, all in all, it was a, uh, a tough night, but we battled back the way we needed to uh, go on to Phoenix. But um, I think Nationwide Insurance, I uh, want to say hey to uh, Christian Wise and, and everybody. Uh, her brother's been sick up in, uh, in Rhode Island. She wasn't able to come with us today. But uh, think about all the victims uh, also up, uh, you know, from the storms and stuff. So great race. Uh, go on to Phoenix. Great top five for Stenhouse tonight. And your co-championship. Actually, he does have the lead, Marty, based on wins in the tiebreaker. That is correct. Uh, with the number of victories that he has over Elliot Sadler, that would be the tiebreaker. But right now, with two races remaining, and, and we can't totally... Uh-oh, here we go. Denny Hamlin and the three-team. That is Danny Stockman there in the glasses. That's He's the crew chief for Austin Dillon. There's Ty Dillon in the mix as well, Austin's brother. And uh, Jamie's right there, so let's find out what's this all about. Well, Denny, uh, you had some choice words there. Where exactly did that start? What happened? Well, he's got to give room. That's why he always gets wrecked at Bristol and a couple other racetracks. First of all, he got his ride because of the name. Second of all, you got to take advantage of the opportunity. If he's points racing, you can't crowd a guy that's running. I'm on the bottom. I'm all the way to the apron. So I'm doing everything I can. Then I'm after the checker flag, he wants to run into me. So I run him into the fence. So... Danny says, look, he ain't got to fix it. Well, maybe he needs to take his little ass over there and fix his race cars if he wants to keep wrecking. So he needs to learn a lesson. All right, there's Denny's side of the story. Marty? And very outspoken, to say the least. And there is Austin Dillon as he is walking back towards uh, his hauler. Words exchanged with uh, Cole Witt there on how both their races went. Cole had a good run going. His car sort of fell away at the end of the race. He ended up coming home in 12th position. We're so while some of these other teams continue to discuss things, let's uh, check in on Victory Lane and 